Right, then, um, uh, having concentrated on one particular uh, principle, there are a few more um, uh, protection principles for uh, doing encryption properly, the type of thing that Leutnant Jaeger would have been uh, giving orders about. Anyways, you... Uh, keys with a long lifetime, you use infrequently. Um, you use those keys to generate other keys or to uh, uh, encrypt uh, keys that you are trying to transfer, um, things like that. So that you're, you're using them for small amounts of data, you're using them infrequently. You give the adversary um, as little ciphertext encrypted with the same key as, as possible, uh, because the more... Uh, ciphertext you give them, the more uh, types of attacks that can be mounted against them. Um, so, uh, session keys uh, that are, well, should these days probably just be used one time. Um, so change session keys frequently. Um, have one copy of the key. Now, of course, we talked about uh, key recovery. Um, uh, so, you know, this is, this is not hard and fast, but, um, you know, keep copies of the key to a minimum. Um, and if it is important, if this is a key with a long lifetime, then yes, uh, you know, some kind of key recovery system. And we've, uh, you know, talked about things like multi-party control and those, uh, types of issues, um, uh, storing uh, parts of the key in different places with different people, um, different uh, uh, forms of escrow to to try and hold these keys and you know protect them uh, while they're being stored. Um, use different keys for different applications. Again, you know, all same passwords. Um, well, uh, you know, different passwords for different systems. Um, same thing. Don't have, you know, all your uh, encrypted materials encrypted with the same key so that somebody finds one, you know, gets one key. Well, it's also, uh, you know, against the uh, injunction, the principle, to... Uh, infrequently use keys that you are uh, using that have for a long time that have a long lifetime. Um, so, you know, it's it's the same thing. Um, uh, uh, you have in in terms of key generation, and again, you know, we've talked about randomness um, and the difficulties with regard to randomness. Um, so, uh, you know, just extend that to the idea that you use closed and trusted and comprehensive processes for generating keys. Uh, again, pick them from the entire key space. Uh, do not um, use a, uh, you know, a subset of the available keys. Um, uh, use um, uh, salt nonce initialization vector challenge whatever you want to call it um, the, the salt uh, should be big enough to uh, access the entire key space um, and again you know the different types of, of things that actually can generate uh fairly random or at least unpredictable numbers for us in in terms of key generation um, so and and those those systems should be closed they shouldn't be used for other things we you know we uh, shouldn't have our uh, key generating software you know on our web server uh, so that somebody who is just trying to attack our web server is finding out how we generate keys and, and what the keys actually are. 
um, encryption and key management are, you know, or should be integrated in the applications. Um, it should be part of the process. It should be built in. It, it should be done together. If uh, and and the people who are doing this for us, you know, are you know, even if you think of it as an administrative uh, thing, uh, type activity process, whatever you want to say about that, they should be trained. Um, they should be trained in these protection principles. They should know why they are doing it. Um, you know, uh, this is important. If encryption is important to you, if confidentiality is important to you, if integrity is important to you and is being maintained by things like digital signatures, you know, this is important to you. This is important to your company. And you need to take it seriously. It's not a magic bullet. It's not going to happen automatically. You have to do it right. Same with everything else in security.